Hello and welcome to IR Thinker, where international affairs are discussed. I'm Martin Zubko. Today I'm interested in Chinese stratagem. And basically I have two goals. Firstly, to understand the Chinese stratagem. And secondly, to understand Chinese leadership, especially political leadership. Today my guest is Mr. Hei Sing Tso from Hong Kong. Hello. Hi, hello Martin. Nice to meet you. So, Mr. Sting So is an independent scholar who studied at the City University of Hong Kong Law and the University of Edinburgh. He was also awarded a Master's of Arts degree in Theology at the University of Chester. Mr. Sting So research focuses on traditional Chinese stratagem. Apart that he is a practicing lawyer, he is also the president of the Guiguzi Strategy Learning Firm which helps to business and politics, especially governments, to understand Chinese strategy. Lastly, Mr. Ting Tso also wrote a book called I Ching 36 Tricks, Your Personal Wisdom Manual, which focuses on the Book of Changes, which is the most ancient and mysterious source of Chinese thoughts and wisdom, including Confucianism and Taoism. So, Mr. Hei Sing Tso, is qualified to speak about Chinese wisdom, thoughts that we can find in the past and how those thoughts are being applied at the present to Chinese leadership and politics, businesses or traditional way of thinking. So people in the West, if we know the principles of the Chinese strategy, we can better understand China as a whole country also the leadership and the politics. And let's start with the, with the first question. And the question is Chinese stratagem versus strategy. In the West, we usually speak about the strategy, but we don't speak that much about stratagem. So, Mr. Sing Tso, can you please elaborate on that difference so we better understand what is what? Sure, Martin. Uh, sure. Thank you for your invitation for our interview. And welcome all the audience to the show time. Okay, let me explain a in a simple way. A traditional Chinese stratagem, or in short, stratagem, uh, is a Chinese wisdom, a wit, a metaphor, or even a trick that is highly abstract. Abstract, okay, and that used the, the main purpose is to beat or defeat an enemy, but the enemy is can be also be a problem. So uh, to solve the problem is in the from the perspective of stratagem is to beat the enemy. I think it is very different from the word strategy in the Western sense. Uh, stratagem uh, is uh, is can be applied through different levels. Okay, for a from a personal, uh, from a unit, from a organization, uh, from a uh, enterprise, or at the level of nation or even in the international relations. Stratagem is a concise, while the strategy is a sophisticated. And in particular, a very important feature of stratagem is a quick and instant way of thinking, which is rather different from strategy. If we usually talk about strategy, it's a planning, okay, detailed planning. But from the stratagem, it may be used and be invented within a very quick, instant quick way, okay to solve an instant problem, a reflection. So that stratum is very different from the strategy in the Western sense. I see. And, and how many people in China research Chinese strategy? Is it like popular topic to research? Uh, I think up to the present time, only a small number of scholars, both in China and in Taiwan, have token, taken an academic and systematic approach to study the strategy. Mostly works in Chinese strategy published in China and Taiwan are just the Asian texts uh, with uh, interpretation. Uh, to some extent, they will use them, uh, used some examples in the history, or maybe if applied in the context of business, the business case studies to apply to this strategy uh, in the real world, in the actual world. But uh, Academically, I think no many courses 
and offer the in university are devoted to such academic and systematic training or teaching of Chinese strategy. I think it's different from the Xinji art of war, which is more military focused. In fact, Xinji has been not taught in uh, Chinese in China and Taiwan. It may be in some Western military schools, such, such as West Point or something. But Shajitam, I think, is different from the Xinji. Uh, it is rarely studied, even in China and Taiwan, in Hong Kong. Great. And can you tell us a little bit about why you started to research stratagem, like your story? Like, was it the interest in the past or you came across interesting book that got your attention? How was it? So, so my audience know you a little bit. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, in my earlier academic studies, uh, I studied uh, Western disciplines, disciplines like law, theology. But in my leisure time, I like to read the, and study courses in Chinese culture. In particular, about the Book of Change, Changes, which is the I Jing or Yi Jing which, as you said before, is a Asian sources for all the traditional Chinese uh, disciplines. Not only in philosophy, but maybe you can see in martial arts or traditional Chinese medicine. Okay. So, but in my secondary school years, I sometimes go to the libraries and read about those uh, Asian texts uh, and wisdom books. I find that some of them, like the 36 tricks, and also the uh, books by the Asian leader, an Asian thinker called it, uh, known as Gui Guzi, Gui Guzi, uh, which is a, a Asian Chinese school of diplomacy, which is also really, really uh, studied by the Western schools. I find it very interesting. Absolutely. But in fact, uh, uh, so, but indeed, uh, when that time I, do, I did not have uh, used all my time to study it, okay, and to research it. But however, uh, when I practice law and engage the other activities, I find that these systems, in fact, can be applied to my daily life and my career. So that I gradually uh, use much, some time to study and also write a book about this. I think that uh, in the past, or in the recent, uh, in the recent past, uh, not many people, even the academics, even in China, in Taiwan, have promoted or share this wisdom with the Western people. I think it is, it's, not, it's not good, okay? I think this treasure should be the treasure of the whole mankind, okay? Uh, it, not, it not only can assist the other people to understand China, it can also assist them uh, all the, all, over the world, okay? Even Western, African, or uh, Latin American, all these Europeans to use this wisdom for their decision making. It's to make their life better not only in politics, uh, business, business, and may be useful in their daily lives. That's all my journey, academic journey, to study this topic, this, this subject. That, that's fantastic. And I can, yeah. I can confirm what you're saying, because I myself, I'm writing my dissertation about yes. China and Russia. And each yeah. month, I'm discovering something new about China. And then yeah. I think, oh, I know something about China and then another one and it's something new. So in the yeah. age of globalization, where I thought that the information will be available like that, you know, it's still quite hidden under some sort of surface. So I'm very happy that we have opportunity to dig deeper into this stratagem and we can spread the word because it might be useful for many researchers, especially nowadays when diplomacy needs yeah. much more attention because the world is in sort of you know disorder we have so many tensions diplomatic yes. clashes you know wars yes. conflicts so i think it's very very important to know something about the chinese way of thinking because yes. china is you know the country which is a superpower with the population with the technological and uh, economic growth so i think sure, sure. that's quite useful let's jump yeah. to the second question that i prepare for yes. today and that's yes. the 36 stratagems is a chinese essay used to illustrate a series of stratagems used yes. in politics war and civil interactions yes. how relevant is this work in the present 
because it's quite old work, but how and why it is relevant today? Uh, this British stratagem or tricks, okay, you can say tricks, uh, in fact, were developed and formulated throughout the Chinese history. So the, district, the different stratagems were invented or uh, found out, okay, uh, from time to time. Not a book which uh, was written by a single scholar, okay, single thinker. It was so it, it was a continuous development. Yes, continuous, continuous, continuous. And, and and you can see, maybe you can read my books. They have different history, okay, history stories, okay. Uh, sometimes uh, one stratum is uh, origin, the origin is for a one historical episode, okay. So this was developed and formulated throughout the history. But in fact, these stratagems were practiced in practice, okay, and repeated throughout the history. In, you know, the Chinese history is about two, at least 2,000 years, which uh, were filled up with wars, conflicts, etc. So that this practice, this stratagem has been practiced throughout the history. Uh, so that they are, this practice has not been interrupted. interrupted. Uh, but most people will uh, will that uh, this Stratagem or these tricks were confined to the internal politics uh, and the conflict inside China. Okay, in fact, the history is Chinese history, and not global history. But in recent recent years, China uh, has adopted a more um, assertive, okay, assertive or active steps in the world scene, in the world politics. Our, I think uh, they will find this stratagem uh, 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 a revival, okay, in revival in their research. In particular, you can look about that when some Chinese leaders, when they talk about a politics and policy or policy address, they will always call the Chinese Asian wisdom sayings, okay? So that I think uh, in their mind, okay, in their mind, uh, they will also apply the distrust or minds or, or, or wisdom to, to their thinking process. So that I think it is logical that uh, uh, the Asian wisdom, uh, such as Chinese Chasm or Francis Chasm are shaping their way in the uh, decision policy uh, making in policy and in politics. So that, that's quite interesting to know that it was a development. It was not written like one off. And can you can you buy this uh, work as a book in China or like how people can access the text or is it on internet okay. free of okay. charge? Yeah, internet is free of charge. Okay, okay. Uh, in box in box there are many books published in China in Taiwan. Okay, usually, and um, I think, uh, in fact, uh, the take, take the Chinese forty six traditions. You will take in two forms. The first form is the common form, which is only a few works, like a poet or a mason. But in fact, later when the fingers in the past history has used the Yi Jin to interpret the stratagem. So that there is some text, text which try to elaborate or to explain the power or the mason in terms of the Yi Jin principle. Okay, but that part is much less studied by the scholars. So in my book, I've used the Yi Jin part to, to, to interpret. But for most people, they just know the masons. For example, uh, I can call an example, uh, borrow a knife to kill a person. It's very simple. Okay. It's very, most people will only know this. But in the Yijing test, there is much sophisticated. In fact, you must know some Yijing principle and theory in order to understand thoroughly about what they say about this short, specific structure in the, con, in the Yijing context. Okay. But you can see all these structures in the online courses or in the simple books. But most books in uh, published in China and or Taiwan are coded with historical examples, historical examples, which is easy. Also, uh, if if you come across there is a Swiss Swiss scholar, I don't I don't forget his name. He has written a book about strategic strategy strategies in German and then translated into English and other languages. But I have looked in the them, they. He not only he did not use the Yijin theory, but he called up many examples, uh, not only the age uh, historical ones, but in the Western stories, or even in the Bible, or in the uh, con uh, modern contemporary po politics in China to illustrate the each strategy, so that um, all the readers will understand more thoroughly about the application. That's interesting to know. Yeah. Anyway. 
let's uh, speak about the categories because in the 36 stratagems, there yes. are six categories and I will read yes. them so my students yes. can, can understand. The first yes. one is when in a superior position, the yes. second when in an equal position, the third yes. when in inferior position, fourth mm. when strategy for deceptive tactics, fifth yes. stratagems for direct confrontations, and yes. the sixth, the last one, stratagems for desperate straits. Yes. Could you please describe how those categories could be used yeah. in practice, please? Yes. And and how to understand why they are divided into these categories? What's the purpose of that? Yes. Uh, in fact, I don't prefer this categorization. Okay. Because this categorization, there was no such mention in Asian texts and even modern academic works. Okay. Uh, in fact, each stratagem is developed, as I said before, throughout the history. And each stratagem is very flexible and can and need to be creatively applied. Okay. So if we rigidly use these categories, one will frustrate the creativity of each stratagem. But however, you can still use these categories as a framework when when you read as a conference with each stratagem. So I think don't restrict uh, and gradually divide the stratagems into these six categories. For example, uh, in the um, in the final stratagem, run away is supreme. It can, it can be applied in each, each category. So that don't virtually apply that. For example, if I, I, I can see that uh, the first to six second uh, uh, stratagem is superior position and the seven to the 12 is equal position, okay? I, I don't, 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 don't be restricted in this way. It will limit their application. However, this formula or the positions can be used as a framework to assess the effective, effectiveness and how do you how you actually use this structure in each individual cases. Right, because because the reason for those six categories is when I basically simulated a search for Chinese stratagem, these no. six categories, you know, is going to be the first th first thing that people in the West will see when searching on Google. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, and, yeah. And therefore, it's good to clarify, as you just yeah. said, you know, how to yeah. how to work with those six categories, and. Yeah, when, yeah. And, and one thing, when, when I have stratagems, for instance, when in superior position, yeah. is this from the state point of view, like government, or is this from the people's point of view? I think when, when for example, if you say it's in superior position, if the person or the entity who use this stratagem, okay, it may be a person, it may be a business, it may be a nation, okay? Right, right. Okay. So, so it's quite it's quite universal to apply yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just to nation or army or etc. Yeah, apply to the subject to use to search them. Then you will. How about if it is in your inferior position? If the nation is in your inferior position, you can you can use this strategy. If the person is in the inferior position, you can use the strategy. Also, the position is with reference to the subject. You will use the strategy. I think you can. Uh, interpret in this way. For, for people who have no idea about Chinese strategy, it's also very important to see and to understand that they are universal. So they could be applied from different point of view. Yes. How, how Chinese people learn how to use those ideas? Is there any philosophical stream which they follow? For instance, they follow Taoism, Confucianism, or some you know, streams, how to get those ideas together. Yes. Uh, most people will learn this by uh, oral legacy, okay? L oral trust. But in fact, I think this is only a superficial way, okay? You still can use them, but not a, not use a imperfect way, okay? In fact, as I said in the very beginning, if you want to understand comprehensively and more in detail the nature and the effects of this strategy, 
you must know something about the Egypt, the Book of Changes. Okay, uh, this is a I think is a about the Chinese view of the universe. In Chinese view of universe, all things, the microcosm or the macrocosm universe, is made up of two polar opposite forces. You can see a yin and yang. Yin means a negative, uh, an underground or a dark, okay? Yang means an office, okay? But it can be applied to universality, okay? Applied to all polar, polar energy or features, okay? Also, this yin and yang form a dialectic wholeness, okay? So that the yin will gradually change to yang, and the yang will gradually change to yin. Okay, I think you must get this basic principle. So that if you know this about this the basic principle, you can easily follow what the essence and of the each strategy. But but I I I, I, I as I've said before, most people do not notice use this framework or philosophically dream framework to understand the strategy. But if you want to know more about this, you must know this, okay? Most people, common people, only memorize the powers, the mechanisms, and they apply strictly to the, their situations. It can still be applicable, but not as, bad, as good as if you have the philosophical background on the theory behind the strategy and behind the strategy thinking. Right. That's all my way. Yeah, the, the, the reason why I ask, because, you know, in the West, for instance, when yeah. we are children, we have certain stories that we are told by parents, grandmother, you know, so we are, we are raising in certain framework of stories and wisdom. And yeah. when we are adults, these, you know, influences our thinking and how we act, how we understand the world. So, yeah. so therefore, you know, when in China, some people they'll deal with a Chinese stratagem. This yeah. automatically goes to the decision making process and thinking. Because yes, otherwise, yes. otherwise, you know, they, they are basically not able to develop the thinking without yeah. being raised in certain, you know, certain framework with the stories yeah. how to decide in this situation or that situation based on what parents told them. How yeah. how they how the people were educated. So, yeah. so, so this is my point, you know, that sometimes we have a Western Chinese clash, which is unnecessary just because of misunderstanding how we were raised and how yeah. we make decisions. Yeah. So that therefore, you know, that that's quite important to, to know about, yeah. Uh, yeah. about how people are, are thinking. So when we take Chinese stratagem as a concept, yeah. then we apply or can we answer what role does this concept play in the Chinese foreign policy? Yes, I think uh, the Chinese leader or the Chinese officials, and they, uh, for example, uh, like the inner circle, okay, they uh, formulate or uh, to make the policy or the, make the grand strategy design. Yeah? I think they will use this strategy implicitly, okay, implicitly in a decision making. Uh, but not only in some grand design, as I know, as I said before, strategy can be uh, applied in a more grand scale, like strategy, but it can be also restricted to the daily tactic, daily trade. So when the Chinese government to uh, deal with the foreign policy, okay, or deal with the uh, foreign affairs with other countries, okay, like United States or Russia or other friendly nations, they will use strategy uh, from time to time. In terms of ground design, ground strategy, long term, middle term, but only in the daily encounters. Okay, for example, some incident, some tension happened be, be between US and China. Okay, the, the, the China want to make a decision to solve the problems. They will also use strategic thinking. But however, they will use it in an implicit way. You may not know the wording. Okay. They will not call the wisdom in their press, okay? But from their conduct and and what appear in the in the surface, may may guess what strategy they may use in each individual situations, okay? 
I think that's that's that, that's okay. That, 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 that is possible. That is possible. Right. And in China, do you yeah. have any books or research papers about the Chinese stratagem and the foreign policy? Or or it's not the because you know, I I want to just 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 direct people yeah. if they want to further research this question. Yeah. If, if there are any any like for instance books like for instance in the West when when you study diplomacy you automatically yeah. read the big book Diplomacy by Henry Kissinger, which is yeah, you know yeah. this is like like yeah. a masterpiece of diplomacy. Yeah. And is yeah. there anything like that in China related to Chinese stratagem and foreign policy? Some influential book? Yeah, in fact. Uh, I have also uh, searched, okay, so some possible uh, literature, academic literature about the destruction of Chinese wisdom uh, and international contemporary international relations. Uh, most of them uh, uh, to uh, study about the uh, uh, Asian Chinese philosophy and uh, contemporary international relations were written by scholars in mainland China, okay. Because for Taiwan, Taiwan is a more uh, westernized, uh, educated uh, academic community. Okay, but however, I have noted that most of this uh, literature, okay, written by the mainland scholars, focus on Confucianism. I see, and also put it into a context of ground theory of international relations, and another about is using Xun Ji. Xun Ji, I think, is more famous. But as I said before, Xun Ji is more on military aspects and the strategic aspect of uh, international relations. And less concerned about the general diplomatic approach or uh, 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 other statecraft okay, about foreign affairs. So up to the present time, I think then um, they still are not sufficient academic literature, even uh, papers or books, uh, etc., uh, on studying the, the the use of structure in the international relations. It's still in the immature premature stage of development. Okay. I see, I see. So that you still need to I mean we still need to wait, wait for uh, whether they will use such uh, uh, important uh, works. But I suggest, I suggest, in fact, uh, some uh, a little, uh, some student in the, uh, uh, I have contact with two students who was a graduate in the international relations from Armenia, okay? They have asked about my advice. I suggest them to read a book which is written by two military generals in China, known as unrestricted warfare. Okay, unrestricted okay. warfare. Because this is a concept developed in China recently by the People's Liberation Army. Uh, although not strict referring to the Asian wisdom, but I think the uh, concept and the mindset are much akin to using the strategism and the um, Asian wisdom of China. Uh, they the gist of the book is about how to launch a new version of hyper warfare against the West. Okay, they took a more holistic approach, not restricted to the military side. Okay, I think it is reflect on the similar approach using by used by the Chinese government. Chinese government at the present time, unlike the United States will not solely or rely on the military confrontation as a means of diplomacy. It will use a all around, a holistic approach to manage the relationship with other countries. I think this is a book, I think uh, it's valuable, it's worthy to read, okay? It is, it's an English translation, you can, uh, I can buy it on Amazon. Right, okay. maybe maybe we can include this in the YouTube description so people can, you know, access, access yeah. this book yeah, yeah. Without, without problem. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah. that that was good. Good part about the Chinese strategy. Now let's jump to leadership a little bit. So, yeah. when we have leadership and stratagems, yeah. how can we access or how can we approach the Chinese political leadership using okay. the Chinese wisdom? 
can you please yeah. tell us sort of like you know the, the proper way so we are not yeah. researching something which is not yeah. there but we want to focus on the core business or the core values and the principles how to do yeah. it now for leadership or the governance okay we do not using uh well do we will not look into the uh, strategy like 36 tricks okay over the Xinji because it is more about the diplomacy or statecraft or military. We must try to understand another Asian school of Chinese wisdom, which is called the legalist school. Legalist school. Legalism is law, okay? But according to legalist school, law is not the same as law in Western sense, okay? Law is an instrument for power and government, okay? Now, legalist school is also re really studied by the Western scholar, okay? Uh, because, as you know, you may know, Confucianism, in fact, had been a long time an official ideology throughout the Chinese history, okay? Legalism were blamed or ignored or even rejected from the mainstream scholar and government throughout the Chinese history. But it is a very curious position that most emperors and the leaders throughout the Chinese history officially say that they were driven by the Confucian ideology, but indeed they were used the, the tactics and the stratagems laid out by the legalist school. So that there was a Chinese saying in history. External Confucius, Confucianism, inside the Paris, in the royal Paris, legalism. The legalism is very important in uh, thinking or thought if you understand the Chinese government, in particular in the present time. Now, uh, legalist, legalist school focus on uh, the personal power of the leadership. Through, uh, in, in the governance or the, in the administration of the state. Um, mixed up with some realist uh, statecraft to consolidate the authority of the government in the, in the Asian time and even practice throughout the history. The, there is a famous finger in the legal school uh, known as Han Fei. Han Fei was sometimes known as the Chinese Machiavelli. Machiavelli. Okay, you know Machiavelli, okay, in Italy. Han Fei is not as Western and Chinese Machiavelli. Of course, there are some similarities, but also difference, okay? So, okay, what legal school is focused on? Just first, central authority, centralization of power. Also, collectivism is prevailed over the individual interest, okay? Also, law and institution are important but not in the strict Western sense. Law and institutions were used for reward and punishment the people, okay, in order to consolidate the governance and efficiency. In fact, I think in the present time, the Chinese leadership or the Chinese government or the Chinese regime is to a certain extent focused using the legal school, principle and policy in governance, okay? Especially, I think, uh, is the case more akin to the leadership style of Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping. Okay. So, as you can see, uh, China will not go to a more Western democratic way of government in the near future. In the near future. Because in China, collectivism and efficiency are much important. So that when you study the Chinese leadership, you must know this Asian school. I think it is very beneficial for observers and scholars. Right. That was that was fascinating to to hear. You know, because now for five seconds, I was thinking how different is the thinking, the Western and the Chinese in in the yes. principle of understanding. Because you yeah. know, in the West, we focus on individuals. Yeah. Most, mostly, you know. So, yeah, so, yeah. so, so the law, the institutions, everything is being adjusted to the individual, or yeah. you know, 
as as a, as a values. But but yeah. that's 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 super important when when we speak about the different countries, yeah. and different yeah. way of decision making process. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so <clears throat> when when we approach the Chinese political leadership and decision making yeah. process. And yeah. we know something about the stratagems, but we also know about the school of, you know, legal school that you that you mentioned. Yeah. Then, then when we mix all these together, what are the most common misunderstandings that you receive from the Western scholars, or or where do we make the most common mistakes when we yeah. speak about China? We see China in the West at the moment. Yeah as a rising yeah. power in yeah. some countries is a threat yeah. in some countries is a military superpower doing some steps in the south china sea and we have japan yeah. we have taiwan we have all mm -hmm. those issues so how and 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 how to better understand china when we can avoid the mistakes that we are making in our thinking no. I think I, I give you a, a few points, okay, because there are many points which is interesting. There are five points, okay. The first point is traditional China or Chinese people or even the Chinese nation should want to be respected more than material interests, okay. There's a Chinese saying, I like to have faith, okay. Faith is more important than Money and other material advantage are irrelevant. In the past history, okay, China always have some peripheral small nations, okay. They hold the Chinese central government use the big brother, okay. But in return, in fact, the Chinese central government and para give more than that than they give to the, the central government. So that you you say I'm the big brother, I'm the leader. That's okay. I'm very happy. I will give you everything you like. Okay. So Chinese people or Chinese nation like to have respect more than material advantage. That's the that's the first thing. Okay. You will deal with the China. The second one, because of the light legalism and Confucianism influence, China always treat the nation as a family. Like a family, not a not a unit or a, a, a collective, a competitive of individual units. They will treat, treat the people, citizens as sons and daughters. Okay. So when they have some problem with the citizens, they will uh, act like a father. Okay. So it's similar to the Lee Kuan Yew regime in Singapore. It's a father. Okay, so that when father have some problem or quarrel with his daughter, it's my responsibility and my duty to teach them. Okay, it's a family business. So other persons are not in my family, not to say too much. Okay, I think the Chinese have a better such attitude. Okay, yes, you can give me advice. Okay, but you cannot order me to how to treat my people, okay? I think the second point is very important for The third point is that, in fact, for external relationship, China is wants to avoid conflict, okay? In fact, under one perfect. They try to have a harmony. harmony. In fact, China is a little different from Russia. Chinese is a de defensive realism. Okay, not offensive realism. His security, Chinese security, lies on maintaining integrity of the periphery of the existing boundary. Not unlike the Russia wants to expand, uh, expand in order to maintain the secure insecurity uh, concern. Okay, I think this is very important. Although there are some dispute over the South China South Sea Asia South Sea, I think it's related to the coastal and the pure economic zones. Okay, not to expand upwards, uh, upbound to the Pacific Ocean, okay? I think this is another point, okay? External relationship, I have said before, China always wants to avoid conflict, okay? But build a harmony, harmony. So that, as you can see, 
China, I have said, uh, said before, is very different from Russia. China just wants to maintain its integrity within the boundary, okay? Within a system peripheries, okay? She does not and not intend to expand in order to secure his assistance, unlike the Russia. Russia sometimes want to expand. They say he what they think is that to expand is secure. The China is not. We don't need to expand. We just maintain, okay? Maintain. So that Taiwan is a red line, okay? Not to be caused that, okay? And South South Asia and the South Sea is okay if the coastal area is, is protected and defended. I, I think China will stop. They will not send the uh, uh, fleets to other like uh, Gulf War or something Pacific or African. They will not do that, okay? Okay. The fourth one is that people don't, foreign friends, don't underestimate the in endurance of the Chinese people. As you can see in the past century, during the Sino Russia, Russia uh, Soviet conflict, okay, the Soviet regime have retreated, restored all the experts from China. China did not fear. China still have the capacity to invent the atomic bombs, okay, using very cool using pen power, manual calculation, okay, no computer, no calculator, just manual calculation to test the atomic bomb and then they invent the nuclear weapons, okay? Also, they can withstand a very severe and hardship uh, condition. So that even you impose serious sanctions against China, you come to China, I think China people will survive and withstand, okay? It's not very effective using these, these sanctions, okay? The last one I want to give my view is that the Chinese leaders try to think problems in a holistic way, risk way, not a uh, mechanical way, okay? It may look in a global picture and also taking into different consideration, okay? Uh, not just maybe beyond the, the existing or the present problem. But there's a problem here because if they think about this way, it will be less predictable. <laughs> okay, so this the few points I want to share with audience about uh, how the Chinese think and the Chinese leader to think and the features of the Chinese uh, leadership uh, on dealing with politics and diplomacy. Right. That was that was absolutely amazing to hear because there are so many points that we should consider when approaching China. Instead yes. of being isolated in um, sort of, you know, like one way of thinking, when you observe the Chinese political leadership, is there the area in this leadership where you yeah. think they should apply more ancient wisdom? Uh, I think that, in my view, uh, there are few four, four challenges in the in maybe few, future five years or decades. Okay. 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 I need to deal with. The first is very important: is the Taiwan problem. Taiwan problem. Taiwan problem has been a long problem, you know, but as as we talked before, in recently China has put a more assertive posture or position to where other countries, in particular with the United States, and also Chinese military capability, indeed, has been upgraded. This is a fact. We 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 do not avoid to. Uh, uh, say that no, China is uh, still a very uh, low uh, tech military power. In fact, although I think I, I admit that there is still some distance between United States and uh, China. Okay, China has still a long way to catch up with United States in the arms and uh, ways. Okay, ahead, but Taiwan is still a problem. Also, the United States, uh, I think. Republicans or democracy still use Taiwan as a chest tax or to manage okay the relationship with China. So that on the other hand, China still try to avoid the total military confrontation with Taiwan. 
because China still holds a policy for peaceful unification with Taiwan. So that's the problem. How to manage the crisis is the key challenge for the Chinese government in the future. If not managed that carefully or tactically, it will become a danger. Such danger will frustrate the peaceful unification and potential for peaceful talks with Taiwan, which I think China would not like to see. So that in this case, but in case, I, I think the tension will arise from time to time in the future. When the, in particular, when the relationship with the United States is improved, then the risk will be lower. But once when the relationship is higher, then the possibility of conflict will be increased. So how do China to manage each crisis or each tension in a wisdom way? It will depend on their decision making and possibility to apply the strategy to solve this way. Okay. As you know, in the Chinese Chinese lie the Xinji. Xinji has a very best remembered word is winning without battle. Mm, it's right. the highest way. Right. Winning without force is the highest way. So Xinji is different from Kausiris. Okay, Kausiris focus on actual affliction between the actual conflict. Xinji is not. Xinji is the the best way, the best warrior, the best general is to beat the enemy without force, without anyone hurt, without weapon. So China, if he wants to adopt the highest wisdom of Xinji, is to win over the tension without force, although with military backup. I see. So the Taiwan problem and the crisis management will be a great challenge for China in the foreign five years or even the decade. I think it's the first uh, challenge ahead. Okay. Second uh, challenge ahead is, re is something related to me is about the Hong Kong. Okay. Hong Kong, as you know, there were some chaos before. Okay. And also has a, is a hot topic for the West, including the United Kingdom. Okay. So, but Hong Kong, I think, has a particular importance for China. Although China has Shanghai, uh, Shenzhen, or other newly uh, established city, Hong Kong is still a treasure for China because of the legal system and the uh, 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 financial importance, uh, free capital, flow of capital, Free capital of a uh, free flow of labor in, in international city. But however, there's some crisis. There's still some problem here because of the chaos. And also, you know about the national security law and national security uh, measures. Then it will subject Hong Kong to a difficult position, possibly replaced by Singapore, for example. So how Chinese leadership to renovate the Hong Kong as an international city, as a channel for assisting the Chinese continuous open policy is very important. He must remain to take him and make China, uh, Hong Kong remain a international attractive city to attract the capital and other investment to help the China's economic development, in particular, maybe one by one road, etc. I think this is important. It has some make efforts, but it's not sufficient. Okay, I think it will need some more time to build up. Also, the UK and United States will sometimes use it as a propaganda or blaming uh, the, the China's government for over intervention in the Hong Kong. Also, use it to as an example to set for Taiwan. Okay, Taiwan, you know, Hong Kong promised five fifty years. But no promise, no key promise. So you will, you cannot trust mainland China. So Chinese still has a very much work to do with how to maintain Hong Kong as a attractive city and a channel for opening of China. This is the second, I think, a challenge ahead for Chinese leadership. The third one is about international relations. Is 
like your topic, how to balance the with the Russia with the West. I think it's very important. In particular, relations with Europe. In fact, as you know, China, Russia has now has a strategic partnership. But in fact, in the past, China, Russia relationship is not good. Uh, just like Japan. In fact, in the in most old Chinese mind, Japan and Russia are not good people. I see. Uh, Chinese uh, uh, because they are neighbors. Not like the other UK, uh, United States, France is far, far away, okay? They took their advantage to get the territories in China in the past, in the last in the last 18th, 18th century. So, however, however, for pragmatism or realistic point of view, in the present moment, if China want to counterbalance the United States, Russia is the only option, only choice. But China will not lean entirely to Russia. She still want to have one by one role in Eurasia and also maintain a good relationship with Europe. That's important. So how to make a appropriate balance with the Russia relationship? I think it's also very, very important. In fact, in before the Ukraine conflict, okay, Russian has some restoration on Chinese one bell one rule because there are some competition for economic interest in the Eurasia region about the Central Asia. As Martin, you will you will you will all also know that Central Asia is there is some de-Russianization okay, policy that's in this a region. Okay. So that if China step in, will this will detriment to Russian interest there? This is also a problem. So that how to use how to balance uh, the Russian relationship with the facts, in particular the rule of I think is another another challenge for China. And China must maybe use strategy, <laughs> to, to to solve this problem. Okay. Okay. Uh the the final challenge I think is the about the one bell one initiative. In fact, after the Russian Ukraine conflict, okay, war or conflict battle, the one bell one road progress, I think, has been accelerated. <laughs> accelerated. Russian to certain extent has compromised with China because from their perspective, if they want to counter off the rule of and the American influence, okay? China is the only partner, okay? In this world, okay? In, 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 in fact, better than, I think, India, okay? China has, economically, in fact, China is more important but relative to India. So, but as you see, if the one one road will progress quickly or the the way of the pave is is decreased. China will take more assertive step in diplomacy. It is inevitable because unlike the economic reform in the last century, the economic reform in the last century, uh, in the last century under Deng Xiaoping is confided to mainland China itself, just attract the investment from the outside, okay? But now you go outside, outside the Chinese territory, go to the North Africa, go to the Central Asia, go to the Balkan Islands, the Balkan region, go to the Middle East. She must, she must take more assertive step. Okay. But it will cause some criticism or protest from the Western country, in particular the United States. So that China will need some art and skill to strike a balance, to cope with the possible tensions and the issues. And the other strategies will be useful, maybe useful in this particular issue. So that I think this four challenge in the next few years, five years, on the given the that case, China needs to tackle with. I maybe use the strategy. That's all my view. Mr. Hei Sing So, thank you yeah. very much for your honest 
analytical, educational and, and deeply informative speech and talk about Chinese stratagem, about yeah. geopolitics, leadership. I think it's, it's not common to find someone like you who knows all those circumstances and connections, you know, how it works all together. So I'm delighted that we could have this interview. Thank and you, thank you. perhaps I think in the future we should also do uh, do a second part about, about yeah, some, yeah, yeah, some yeah. countries around. And yeah, I pretty, hope, yeah. I, yes, absolutely, because the world is very dynamic. What we are yeah, speaking yeah. today about in one or three months might be, yeah. you know, a, a past, a history. Yeah. So, but, but, but honestly, again, thank you very much for joining me. And yes, much I much hope much that much my much. students and the audience, they, they really appreciate your talk. Thank you. And we'll thank put you. some links and some books to the description that uh, yeah. they can access. And yeah. again, thank you, Hei Sing Tso. Thank, thank you, you very much. And have a, have a nice day and yeah, good yeah. luck with your thank career you. and with your research. Thank you. Bye-bye, Martin. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See, see you next time. See you, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.